Hey guys, PsychoGekido here. Today we're going to be going over some tips for the fusion warrior. Now, the basics, uh, as you will see when you first get the weapon, is that the reticule is rather different. Now, targeting reticule is supposed to show the arc on the weapon because the fusion mortar fires first forward and then the weapon falls towards the ground the farther it gets away. It has a very long range, so you can see the medium practice, light practice, etc. All those little dummies over there. We're going to try and hit those. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're first starting out is try and gauge the distance. And you're going to want to memorize these distances for later on. Because as you memorize the distances, you're going to be reusing them, especially when firing at, say, a flag stand. So, this first distance right here, we're going to try this and see how far does that go. Nope, that's not quite it. So we move up what seems like one rung. Now, note the distance change. See, that kind of went. Mm, I guess what you would say in the equivalent in real world about 10 feet. So you move up, we're going to need about 30 feet, you would say, right? So we're going to need three more rungs. One, two, three. And we hit. Now, we're pretty close. We could get a little bit closer because you saw there was only 600 damage. That indicates that they got the very tip of it. So we're going to try a half of the distance to the next reticule, and that's spot on. So that's how you gauge the distance. Alright, moving on to some intermediate tactics. Uh, one of the first things you're going to be doing as a juggernaut when you start up is to figure out how to shell the enemy base. The flag stands over there and it's on one of those lit up platforms. Very hard to see from this distance because we're quite far away. If we zoom in, I have the reticule right on it right now. That is our target. We want to be bombarding that because the enemy is going to try and set up defenses and we need to clear them out for our flag carrier. It's the primary purpose of that. The more you shell that area, the less defenses it has and your 300 Senec Pathfinder will just blow right through there. Now you're going to find this hill that has these two boards on it and this is a good spot to shell from. You move forward a little bit and you're going to want to try and aim at the bottom of the reticule right where the lighted portion is. You want to try, you're probably going to have to take a shot or two to get the right distance. But you're going to need to move forward just a little bit and that's just about right. I think a little bit forward. Hit the platform. That's the important part. So, that's a demonstration. I'm going to fire another one. I'm going to zoom in and see where it lands right smack dab in the middle. That is a perfect position for lobbing at the enemy all kinds of fusion mortars and at the same time since you're up on this high hill the other advantage is it will give you a clear view of any enemies incoming. If they try and chase after you, you have two options. You can try you can run back to your base. Some enemies will not chase you to the base unless they are and uh, like a raider or somebody who's going to attack the base anyway because then it's just kinda on their way. Uh, the other thing you can do is if they are somebody who's going to assault a base like a raider then you're going to try and go off into the middle of nowhere like back here into these boondocks areas because you want to get them as far away from any other objective as possible. Technically you have become an objective on the map by shelling the flag stand. So you're still one objective, but if you can move their assault class away from the other objectives, you can effectively stall him, even if he does manage to kill you. And if you kill him, more power to you. Now we'll be going over indoor combat. You may be thinking, well, what kind of strategy can Juggernaut do other than lob fusion mortars all over the place indoors? Well. That works at lower levels, but at higher levels, opponents can see where the fusion mortars are going to land and can dodge them quite easily. So, one of the things you're going to want to be able to do is figure out how to fight such opponents. Now, the reason for this is why it's so easy at lower level. Opponents will try and dodge around. They aren't quite used to the game yet, and this works on hit scan weapons for the most part, and other SMGs and the soldier's assault rifle, etc. Those sort of weapons, this will dodge a lot of the fire. A fusion mortar though, you land one right between where they're going back and forth and it's going to blow up in their face. So opponents will be very wary about that. Their reaction 
their first reaction after that will be to try and get away from the fusion mortar, but that makes it easier to land the mortar because there's less danger to yourself and it's a lot easier to aim because you can actually look at the opponent. See if I'm trying to aim this a distance of about, you know, like five feet ish, I have to aim about here. That's at my feet. So I can't really see what I'm aiming at, but I have to know where my opponent is and react like that. It has a rather large AoE, so if they're still in this area, they're going to get blown up. But a quick light armor will know what to do. We'll jump straight past to this other section of the room. As long as they're over here, they're not going to take that much damage. If they're here, they're going to take a little bit, but if they're over here, they're going to take zero damage. So this third tactic that enemies will figure out to fight a Juggernaut is to kind of hug them. The closer they stay, the easier it is to dodge the shots. Now, in reaction to that, Juggernauts will then learn that, well, I'm a heavy armor. I have 2600 HP. I have over twice as much HP as them. So I can just blow myself up, basically. And that will kill them if they are hugging me. So that works. And the light armors will die in the lower levels. But again, as you get higher up, then they will figure out, oh, he's lobbing in at his foot. They start paying attention. They'll be like, ah, oh, he's firing at his foot now, so he's going to blow himself up. I'm going to dodge away now. Now, all of this, of course, as you'll notice, is because they're reacting to what you're doing. So as they react to what you do, and they figure it out and think about it more, they'll be able to counter the Juggernaut indoors a lot easier. And the Juggernaut has to switch up some of his tactics. So one of the things you can do is wait for an opponent to land, I think he keeps freaking me out, to land and then fire the fusion mortar as you see them about to land because they might be out of energy or they might not be able to get out of the way fast enough. That is the first tactic you find out about. And the second tactic is you have a secondary weapon! Ha! <laughs> Go figure. So this is a spin fuser. It fires just like all the other spin fusers except it has a larger AOE and does a little bit more damage than the light spin fuser. So, for instance, I'm going to fire right there in the middle of the floor where I hit with the fusion mortar before, and I'm standing in about the same spot. Did not hurt me, so the AoE isn't large enough to hit you, but it did cover that entire section, so it is going to knock them, and it's going to do between, I think, 300 and 600 damage, depending on how close they are to the explosion. If you hit them dead on, I think it's about 700. So, that does quite a bit of damage. It's not going to one-shot anybody like a fusion mortar is going to do, but it's a lot harder to dodge that indoors than it is to dodge the fusion mortar. So that's the one that you can switch to. However, if you're dead set on using the fusion mortar, there's a couple things you can do. First thing you can do is you can use that tactic I said before. You can fire that over there. That's a pretty big EOE, right? Well, you know, they're going to hug you and try and get as far away from that as possible, so you can instead combine some tactics. All right. You only have one fusion you can fire at a time, but you have grenades. And you have your MKD. So, fire that over there, throw a grenade over here, cover two areas. It's much harder to dodge that. Well, let's try something else. Good. Fire that, fire that, switch weapons, and fire that. Now you've pretty much covered the entire room. If they're in here, they took damage. That one is kind of an interesting tactic. And you'll see that in a higher level. So it's more of a blanket explosion in a small area like this. But it's not going to work in a large area. So keep that in mind. A third thing, and this is more of a trick than a tactic, but, well, that works for me, is you're going to have opponents chasing you a lot, because you know, they're trying to hug you, like I said before, and well, it's kind of creepy. So, one thing you can do is you can take advantage of the fact that your fusion mortar can bounce. So, you run towards this wall, you fire, it does not bounce off of you, it does bounce off that wall, it passes straight through you, lands over there. So someone's chasing you, and you're like, ah, no, don't hit me, and then it lands right there. Well, you're at a wall. They keep chasing you, they're still hit by the explosion like you were. So that works pretty much all the time on those Care Bear or Huggy types. If you have any more useful tips, leave them in the comments below for other people to find. And thank you again for watching. See you.